Uh, in the month of March, I would give our team an absolute perfect 10. The other 11 <laughs> months of the year, I think we're a five. And the reason I say that is, um, you know, I, I think on, on all those categories, beyond, you know, do we get rewarded for our audience and all these types of things? Yeah, we do in part, but, you know, we don't, we don't get the full faith and credit that we, we deserve. Um, do we have great discussions, you know, in and around college basketball with a myriad of clients? Absolutely. The biggest names and the biggest spenders in the business from, you know, AT&T and General Motors and uh, Coca-Cola and the like. But we don't have that level of dialogue the other 11 months of the year. And that's, and that's frustrating to me as a, as a uh, person who really believes strongly in what we're bringing to the table, um, meaning that any given day you can reach a million, million and a half men that are enthusiastically following something they're passionate about. In, the case, in, this, in my particular case, it's sports, but across CBS Interactive, it may be games, it may be business news, it may be technology, it may be a, you know, a number of different things. And as a result, I feel like we need to have a better conversation. And I feel like you know, selectively we can do this. And I have this, this whole theory that we, we talk about a lot internally um, as one of our sales mantras, which, which is the rule of 180, that there's really only 180 days you can make a difference in any given year. When you back out long weekends and holidays and everything else, um, you're only really at the table or on the phone or across an IM or texting a client 180 meaningful times. And so if you're trying to grow your business off a base of $100 million, those 180 conversations have to be really substantial. Um, our hope is that we can do that with the, our agency partners and the clients sitting at the same table. That's ideal for us. Um, the coordination of that just because of proximity doesn't always happen quickly. And, um, you know, you can't simply walk into those meetings kind of the way we walked in this panel, half hung, hung over and haggard, and hope for the best results. I mean, you really have to be prepared and diligent about your approach. You have to have a thoughtful conversation. You have to know what their business needs are, what they're trying to do to build their brand, and how you can help them do that. Because at the end of the day, no matter what your clients are doing, they have a story to tell, and they need to help you tell them to tell that story. And you have to be able to do it effectively and efficiently in both, in, both in terms of time and cost. So um, it, it's really, you know, as much as I'd love to give us, you know, the big high marks across the board, there's constant room for improvement. And that's, that's fine, because that's why it's business. So before we were bought in 07, we were at two. I mean, it was not good. I mean, seriously. And it, well, but you're, supposed to be, you're supposed to be rating advertisers, not, you, not yourself. Well, I mean, so, you know, so it's that's two, why if, it's if two, I get, you know, if yeah, I get, we're two, rating yourself, then I'll get back yeah, on stage. Yeah, but it's two I'll sides you guys of the too. coin. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, it was two in both ways, and now it's an eight. And I'll tell you why, because of what you alluded to, which is you can have that harsh conversation. Now that we're part of the family, you know, these guys, like, feel free, all the media buyers, tell us exactly what went wrong. Like, you know, you know, you fucked up here, or you guys, yeah, I'm serious. And they're very harsh about it because, you know, the good news is they will take the meeting with us at any time, and then we're doing a lot of work for them on the other side of the house, on the buy side of the house. So we hear exactly what the issue is, and there's no polite talk anymore. This is, let's get down to business. This is where you, as a network, is not delivering value, right? This is where we just can't touch it just because it won't be good for us or our client. And then right now, we, now that we've kind of hit our footing, we can now push back and say, OK, this is where you're dropping the ball. This is where it's structurally not efficient to grow the overall market. And so we're having this big adult conversation now between publisher and advertiser. And you know, keep in mind that that Chinese wall is quickly dropping. Every advertiser is a publisher. Every publisher is an advertiser in some regard. And so you need to have that honest conversation about what the structural and social issues are on, on both sides of the coin. And once you can have that type of conversation, and I think we're in a very good position to do so from our perspective, then you can move the ball forward. Because until you do that, you're just kind of being polite. And being polite doesn't make money. Good. So kind of common thread is advertisers and the media sellers coming closer together, collaborating, coming up with more creative solutions. The other thing that I've noticed is that um, Yelp is not a compete client, CBS is not a compete client, and 24-7 and is a compete partner. And Yelp was a six, CBS was a five, and 24-7 and is an eight. So if I were to do a correlation there, <laughs> I think there's Before an obvious conclusion compete, that I would draw. Minus two, right? Before we got with compete. Yeah, exactly, yes. exactly. Sure. Well, any other parting questions, any other parting thoughts for our, our media sellers there? Uh -oh. the, uh, I think the grades are fine, but uh, the one thing that's uh, really important for us to recognize is it's impossible to be a 10, or an 8 is not an 8, it's a 7.2, whatever, because we have an ecosystem that really doesn't flow from beginning to end. We don't have Nielsen in the, the planning, uh, buying, and posting phase 
Uh, we don't have a comp score across the spectrum. We have them in the, uh, the planning phase. We've got impressions in the buying phase. We've got dynamic logic in the posting phase, right? We've got a broken ecosystem. We don't have an EDI that goes from beginning to end. So collectively, we all need to work together to actually fix this system so that we can be attentive. So the question is, right, you know, as disjointed as it is, at least it has the individual components to make the promise a reality. I mean, this channel is fantastic because it's the fastest growing channel. Money needs to go to this channel in a dramatic way. What other channel even has the components to measure in a unified way that you can rely on the data from a brand and direct response perspective? So at least we have the components, and I agree with you that fundamentally it's up to all the leaders within the sector to figure out, get over the coopetition issue, right? Because everyone competes, but it's more important to grow the pie, right? So that everyone can benefit. And if that's the case, we gotta get over ourselves in terms of where we have the friction and you know, just agree to a common uh, currency, a common standard. Like, I don't understand, so this is what, um, we're going to be working on. We're going to create the de facto GRP for our online business between Scott and Steve and the good folks at WPP. Yeah, I think I'm going to get my bonus this year. The, um, <laughs> we're going to come up with the new currency so that we can all speak the same language. You know, and that's really going to be more important than if I go up one notch on the rankings or go down one notch because everyone needs to do better because money needs to flow into this sector in a meaningful way. Agreed. I want to thank you guys. Quick round of applause for David Rich and John. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Very good discussion. Yeah. Good. Thank you.